This section discusses the fundamental theorem for line integrals. Now remember when we introduced vector fields, we talked about the gradient field where our vector field is actually determined by the gradient of some function f. The fundamental theorem for line integrals applies only to these gradient fields. Recall that the fundamental theorem of calculus can be written as the integral from a to b of capital F prime x dx equals capital F of b minus capital F of a. So what this is telling us is you take the antiderivative of the integrand function and then you plug in your upper bound and your lower bound and subtract. If we think of the gradient vector, del f of a function f of two or three variables as a sort of derivative of f, then we get the following fundamental theorem for line integrals. <clears throat> the line integral over curve c of the gradient of f dotted with dr, where r of t is our path c, equals f of r of b minus f of r of a. So it's the same fundamental theorem, we're just um, using it with respect to vectors in this case. So our curve c is parameterized by r of t, a vector, and del f is a vector as well. It's the gradient vector of the function f. This tells us that if capital F is a gradient field, then the work done by capital F will only depend on the start and end points and not on the path. This will be really important when we um, start evaluating integrals in gradient fields. The fundamental theorem also tells us that if capital F is a gradient field, and curve C is a simple, smooth, closed, oriented curve. So closed means with the same starting and ending point, so a loop. Then the line integral over curve C of capital F dot with dr equals zero. So in other words, if you have a closed loop with the same starting and ending point, then you're going to get um, from the fundamental theorem, you're going to get the same value subtracted from itself when you apply your fundamental theorem, which will give you zero. Now we need some definitions in order to continue with this section. If the field capital F is a gradient field, so that capital F equals del lowercase f for some function lowercase f, then capital F is a conservative field. So in other words, um, a conservative field is a gradient field. In this case, lowercase f is called the potential function for the field. So if capital F is a gradient field, then the function whose gradient defines the field is the potential function. The domains, capital D, that we consider in this section must be open, connected, and simply connected. So open we discussed in Unit 3, and a domain is connected if any two points in D can be joined by a smooth curve that lies in the region. So in other words, to join two points that are within the domain, you do not have to exit the domain in order to get from one point to the other. So think of connected as in one piece. It can't be two separate pieces. A domain D is simply connected if every loop in D can be contracted to a point in D without ever leaving D. So I have some pictures of simply connected versus not simply connected that will hopefully clear this up a little. 
So simply connected, on the upper left we have a simply connected example and you can see it's, um, it's in one piece and if I um, looked at any point in this domain I could put a path and contract that path to a point without ever leaving um, my domain. Now right below it we have an example of something that's not simply connected where we have basically a hole in our domain and so if I had a path that went around that hole I could not contract that path to a point within the domain. Over here on the right we have the three-dimensional version so upper right we have a simply connected example um, meaning that any path within that domain could be contracted to a point without ever leaving the domain. Whereas in the lower right we have an example of a three-dimensional um, object that is not simply connected. This shape is called a torus, kind of like a donut. And if I had a path going around that hole in the domain, then I could not contract the path to a point without leaving the domain. So that's what simply connected versus not simply connected um, refers to. Now we need to talk about path independence of conservative fields. So suppose that um, curves C1 and C2 are piecewise smooth curves with the same initial and final points A and B respectively. We've seen through some, some of the homework problems that, in general, the line integral over C1 of f dot dr is not equal to the line integral over curve C2 of f dot dr. So even if you have the same starting and ending point, if you have different paths from those points, you'll get different line integrals. Now, in the case of a conservative field, We know that our path or our line integral only depends on the starting and ending point of the path. So for a conservative field, the line integral over curve C1 of del f dot dr equals the line integral over C2 of del, del f dot dr. So the field is path independent, meaning if you have the same starting and ending point of two different curves, then you will get the same line integral if you have a conservative field. So if your function, your vector function, can be written as the gradient of some function. In the next video, we'll start going through some actual examples of how to tell if your, cur if your um, field is conservative.